Good morning. We welcome all who are joining us from your home. We are so pleased that you are with us in spirit. We respectfully ask that all cell phones be silenced. Today we are celebrating the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. This weekend we are pleased to welcome Deacon Dominic Winter, who is studying at St. Charles Seminary for the Priesthood for the Diocese of Lincoln, Nebraska. Deacon Winter will be here on weekends and on Thursdays until the spring of 2022. I am Joe Tufo. Our second lector is Audrey Wilson, and our leader of song is Deborah Eater. The deacon of the mass is Deacon Lou Helsley. Monsignor Michael McCormack is our principal celebrant. In order to increase our understanding and appreciation of the mass, we will be presenting a biblical walk through the mass beginning this Wednesday evening, September 15th, from 7 o'clock p.m. to 8.30 p.m., and continuing for the following five Wednesday evenings, parishioners are invited, indeed encouraged, to come to the Monsignor Woods Hall for this series about the Mass. Please see the registration form in today's Parish Bulletin. We are still accepting registrations for our 2021-2022 Parish Religious Education Program. Parents who have not yet registered are asked to visit our parish website to register as soon as possible. Prep confirmation sessions for levels seven and eight begin this evening, September 12th at 6.30 p.m. Prep sessions for levels K to six begin on Monday, September 13th at 6.30 p.m. For both tonight and Monday evening, parents and students should gather in the church by 6.30 p.m. for the opening prayer service. Our parish school, Holy Family Regional Catholic School, is accepting new registrations for the new school year. There are school flyers at the doors of the church. Please see the parish bulletin for more information. This week's Pot of Gold jackpot prize is $32,000. Tickets are available in the vestibule of the church and also at the rectory. As we prepare for Mass, the prayer for priestly vocations can be found on the inside cover of the blue prayer book. Please stand and let us pray. Father, in your plan for salvation, you provide shepherds for your people. Fill your church with the spirit of courage and love. Raise up the ministers and the altars. Our entrance hymn is 485, Love Divine, All Love Excelling, 485.
morning, everyone. Special welcome to those who are joining us from their home for today's Mass. As we begin our liturgy, I want to welcome back Deacon Lou Housley to our parish community. It's always good to have you with us, Deacon Lou. Deacon Lou was at our 9 o'clock Mass and preached as well. In addition to your own personal intentions for today's Mass, if we could especially remember Peggy Griffith, commending her to the Lord and praying for her son Scott and his family. We also want to remember all those who died as a result of 9-11, for their families who continue to grieve over their loss. We're praying for those who continue to suffer because of 9-11. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Look upon us, O Lord, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let that man confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. Freed my soul from death, 
a reading from the letter of St. James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body, what good is it? So also faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, you have faith and I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without works and I will demonstrate my faith to you from my works. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And along the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others, Elijah, still others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, you are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and then rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this, he turned around and, looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. He then summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, must take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
We have often heard the phrase, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And we see this lived out all around us. Young people, they want to be like Rice Hoskins to hit a home run and win the seventh game of the World Series. So they buy his jersey and they do what he does. Maybe they want it to be like Nick Foles and throw the touchdown that wins the Super Bowl. So they buy his jersey, eat what he eats, and imitate him in whatever ways they can. Maybe they want to be like a famous singer or a movie star. So they buy magazines, read all they can about how they live, where they go, what they wear, and they imitate them in as many ways as possible. When my son was growing up, about five or six, he had two models that he would like to follow. He wanted to be Superman and a cowboy. So he wore his Superman costume all over the place and a cowboy hat and cowboy boots. He did outgrow that and now he's a high school teacher and administrator. Well, maybe he needed to be Superman and a cowboy in that job. Time will tell. Adults do the same thing. They might follow a certain politician, support his or her views, and try to put those views and beliefs into practice wherever they can. However, all of this imitation is superficial. What everyone tends to see in these models is only on the surface. They really don't know who these models are like, what they really believe, what they really do with their time when they're not in the public light. But when they find out who they really are, they begin to walk away. They begin to become disappointed and have a feeling of betrayal. We have a similar situation in today's gospel. Jesus' disciples have left their homes and their jobs, and they have been following him all over the countryside. They have seen him heal a leper. They have seen him command a paralyzed man to walk, to cast out demons, to rise up a girl near death, and open the eyes of a blind man. And now Jesus gathers these followers who have seen all this and say, who do you say that I am? Well, based on what they have seen, they answer John the Baptist, Elijah, prophets. Peter, however, goes beyond that superficial information and those external actions that he has witnessed and says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. To all of Jesus' followers at this point, they feel he is the Messiah the one who will free the people from the oppressions of the Roman soldiers and subject the entire world to the power of God. The people of God, the Israelites, would be in charge of everything and everybody. This was the man that was going to do this. And then Jesus says to his followers that his message is not of world conquest. His message is one of suffering, rejection, and death. And those who follow me must be willing to take up their cross and lose their life. But in so doing, his life will actually be saved. All of a sudden, those who were following Jesus in the hopes of glory are now faced with the fact, do I want to follow someone who all they can promise me is suffering and a cross. They said no, and they walked away. They did not accept his invitation, knowing full well that Jesus would ask them to suffer. They did not want to do that. And some did follow him, some embraced the struggle because it was the only way on the road to a new life. All of us have been invited to follow Jesus at our baptism. How do we accept that invitation? Because it is an invitation to a life of suffering and rejection. What is the true meaning of this kind of discipleship that we are asked to live? 
It's not about achieving power or prestige or a high position in the world. It's about service to others and living his teaching in our lives. And that means accepting the hardships and sufferings that come from that way of life. Enduring the rejection and the scorn from others. Enduring the suffering that we encounter in our life. Now we do this in ways that we might think about. We endure suffering when we stand up for our beliefs that life is sacred from conception to natural conclusion. And when we speak up, when we see others who are spoken about unjustly. We suffer when we reach out to others in need and put our goals in the hindsight because no one else will. Or when we go out of our way to repair broken relationships instead of just forgetting about them because that's easier. We live this life of suffering when we accept the gifts that we have and use them to help others instead of wishing that we had different gifts or when we are honest with ourselves as to who we should be and not who we portray to others. And we have the courage to accept and make changes. We live this life of suffering when we work together with others as a team instead of always trying to be the star. In all these ways, these difficult ways, we live our faith. And as we all know, some of those ways can lead to suffering. Following Jesus in these ways is difficult, but it brings us to the realization that suffering cannot come just through physical illness, but through our relationships with others and our honesty with ourselves. When we immerse ourselves in the human condition, when we reach out to others in their suffering, when we offer help, when we subject ourselves to risk, rejection, we suffer. When we accept the challenges that come to us in life as part of God's plan for us, we suffer. We all have crosses in our lives, but those crosses present us with a unique way to follow Christ. Our crosses keep us real. Our crosses cleanse us and clarify our discipleship. Our crosses are our personal connection to Jesus. And it is through the suffering that we endure that we come to realize that that is the path to eternal life and that we are accepting the role of a disciple of Jesus when we follow that path. We often endure suffering because it is a road that leads to something good. When we go to physical therapy, that causes suffering, but it leads to good health. Countless hours of practice on the sports field or learning to play a musical instrument is often tedious, boring, and challenging, but it leads to success. Living the life of a disciple of Jesus is like that. And so it is time to pause and ask ourselves, do we really identify with Jesus? Have we made our faith a part of who we are and how we live? Or is our faith just a knowledge of facts about that faith, a knowledge of who Jesus was and what he did? It is time to accept the truth that the way to the glory of Easter Sunday is through the passion of Good Friday. Have we now taken the teachings and sufferings of Jesus in our hearts and then pattern our life after his? Remember, our faith is based on Jesus, not just his teachings, but his actions and his words and his life. The question is, as we continue in our liturgy and our lives this week, we need to ask ourselves, do we live our faith or do we just know our faith? Are we living the signs of the message of Jesus to all we meet? Do we follow Jesus by taking up our crosses willingly or do we pretend that they are not there and we look for ways to avoid them or suffer in silence? Does our cross make us bitter and resentful 
or does it make us a saint? The choice is ours. As we come to the table of the Eucharist to receive him, we are given that strength to examine our lives and answer those questions honestly. Maybe it is time to look at the crosses in our lives through a different lens. Maybe it's time to realize that our suffering is really the best way to live as Jesus lived. And when we do that, then we are able to respond to Jesus when he asks each one of us, who do you say I am? Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. May the Lord incline his ear to us as we raise our voices in supplication and prayer. For Pope Francis and all leaders in the church, that God will give them wisdom in addressing the wounds in the church and guide them in renewing and restoring the community of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our country, that on this anniversary of 9-11, we may honor the memory of all those who lost their lives, support those who grieve, and continue to provide care and healing for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who have suffered losses through Hurricane Ida, the recent flooding and wildfires, that God will heal their pain and protect them from further harm, give them hope, and touch the hearts of many 
to assist them. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace, that God will turn hearts from violence and revenge, protect the innocent from harm, and bring forth a new season of justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parish envisioning team, may the Holy Spirit enlighten their hearts and minds as they continue their work to develop a parish pastoral plan. Let us pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life, especially among the young men and women of our parish, and for a deeper gratitude for the priests, deacons, and religious who now serve our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. For all who spend their lives serving others, that God will guide emergency personnel and our military each day, giving strength to all who care for the sick and inspire many young people to join them in serving others. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick of our community and all those who requested our prayers, including those whose names are written in the white intercessory book, that they may find strength and courage in the cross of Christ and discover the redemptive value of their suffering as we especially pray for Stephen Barna, Rocco Budafoco, Nicholas Corato, John Doyle, Casey Eisenbray, Tony Fossolero, Claudia Gonzalez, Mark Gravante, Tom Holden, J.T. Nuttall, John Lonsbury, Connor Scott Mall, Jim Mooney, Danica Mulholland, John O'Callaghan, John Rutkowski, Greg Schaefer, and Mark Whitaker. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, that they will rest in God's glory, as we especially remember Tom Connor, Joseph Creevy, and Father Thomas Shea. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also commend to the Lord Peggy Griffith that she be received into the kingdom and be at peace forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Gracious God, hear our prayers as we call upon your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is 525, For the Sake of Christ. Five, two, five.
and sisters of my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications O Lord and in your kindness accept these your servants offerings that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become 
the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this we proclaim your death, O Lord, until Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, and his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis Cabrini, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion. O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
We invite those who are participating with us from their home and therefore not able to physically receive Holy Communion to please join in praying the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn will be 359, our blessing cup, 359. Our blessing cup, three, five, nine.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we conclude our liturgy, I thank Deacon Lou for once again coming and blessing us through his presence and through his proclamation of the word and through his preaching. So Deacon Lou, thank you very, very much. Of course, I thank all of you for being here as well and those joining us from home. And once again, we invite all our parishioners to the biblical walk Uh, through the Mass, begins this Wednesday evening. Even if you have not yet signed up, please, please let us know and come. Even if you cannot make every night, please come. It will enhance our understanding and appreciation of the Mass so when we come to celebrate, it will be more meaningful to all of us, including myself. And finally, I want to thank our Parishioners, all of you and those who have joined us from home for your prayers for my sister Helen uh, and for me and my family. We had a most wonderful celebration of her life this past Wednesday at 11 o'clock. I could not have asked for more for that celebration. And so I thank everyone. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the root of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is 532, Let There Be Peace on Earth, 532.